Well, as Canberra tries to work out how to deal with increasingly bitter tensions with Beijing, there's another stoush taking place. Wagga Wagga Council in New South Wales is at war over how to deal with trade tariffs crippling their beef, barley and wine industries. A group of councillors is pressuring the mayor to be more outspoken and lobby its sister city to end the tariffs. The motion that will be debated today calls on the mayor to make representations expressing our disappointment with the disrespect shown by recent social media posts of our ADF, requesting the Chinese ministry remove and ban the use of offensive images relating to our ADF, and requesting the tariffs on our beef, barley and wine industries be suspended. One of the councillors leading the charge, Paul Funnell, joins me now for more. Thanks for your time. You're calling for essentially what the Australian government is calling for at a very high level. Why would China listen to the Wagga Wagga Council and not the Australian government? Well, thanks for that, Tom. First of all, I have to convince the council at this stage, I guess I'm almost a lone wolf. I'm looking for support next Monday to do this, to ask our mayor to write to the mayor of our sister city in Bing uh, to represent, to make representation on our behalf. That's the whole point, is that will they take any notice of us? We don't know. But what's interesting is that Wagga is the home of the soldier. Every single recruit and reservist goes through uh, Blamey Barracks at the Kapuka Army Base here in Wagga. And it has a long, proud history of our military. And as civic leaders, I believe it's derelict of our duty to stand up for the defence when they are being maligned for our defence personnel. It's not a day goes by that we can't go down the street or fill in your car or you're running into someone from the defence force. They have been maligned and they have been wounded in more ways than so in relation to I guess the Yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, the line just cut up for a second. Just just to jump in at that point though, you're pushing for if we look at this the tweet to be removed, um, expressing disappointment, and also on the same page to have tariffs removed. I mean, the, isn't one sort of almost going to inflame the other? We know what the, the Chinese Communist Party has has said about tariffs. They claim there's nothing in it. We assume there is a lot more in it in terms of that personal relationship. But again, what's the hope that Wagga Wagga can make a difference? Well, early, back in January, I mean, first of all, how dare China lecture up on human rights? That tweet that was put out of an Australian soldier slitting the throat of an Afghani child. Let's, let's, let's not sugarcoat this. Uh, they may not take any notice, but here's an opportunity. Earlier this year, back in January, the mayor of Kunming wrote to our mayor asking for PPE equipment because they had a flu-like uh, situation in Kunming and could we help them. Never mentioned anything to do with COVID or anything like that. And our mayor, in his wisdom, didn't bother telling anyone and just passed it on. And, of course, I called for the removal of the formal arrangements of a sister city relationship, which I still stand by. However, democratically, it was by the council, they overturned my decision and said, no, we want to remain in that. And that's fine, and I respect that process. So therefore, if we're going to have these relationships, make no mistake, we use them to our advantage. So, and at the time it was argued, these are people-to-people -people relationships. So why not use that? And if, I mean, originally I was calling for an apology. Well, if that's not forthcoming, it just looks like, you know, grandstanding politicisation. Whereas to give the benefit of the doubt, that's what I'm saying, to write to them and express the, the, the hurt and condemnation this is doing to the finest fighting people in the world who will give their life for us without a, within a heartbeat. So I'm hoping that if it is just a cultural issue that we express our concern, Kun Ming, if they're true to their word in relation to being a sister city and a friend and that type of thing, will make representation and potentially explain to the uh, Chinese uh, apparatchik process, Communist Party, call it whatever you like, that... You know, this is not doing anything in regarding our relationships. And in relation to the tariffs, I can tell you as an irrigation farmer uh, and being surrounded, I mean, Riverina can feed the world. We're the food bowl of Australia. It's not just our beef, barley and wine, now wine. It's also our timber industry. They are hurting us mm. big time. But that said, what do you do? Do you just suck it up? Well, I think, you know, our forebears have given us the freedoms and the opportunities that we have. So it would be remiss of us to not stand our ground. There might be short-term pain. But remember, China also needs our products. And, you know, if it can be done in a friendly manner through a letter, to, because once you get to a political level, you know, there's argy-bargy, there's eating humble pie, there's 
all that type of thing. Whereas if we truly reach out, and if they reject us, it's my council. If the council rejects me, well, that's on them, not on me, because I know the people are fed up. And, and the people in these regional areas are fed up. We have an over-representation in the regional areas of our former military personnel, our losses. And, and that goes throughout all the wars, all the conflicts and everything. And further to that, what do we do? Do we just lay down and say, let them walk over the top of us, or do we start okay, this process? Yeah. So, so just you were saying there, why don't you start with you know a, a nice letter, people to people, and that's how perhaps this might achieve something. But surely the the, um, uh, the Chinese governing body in Kunming will know that you, in a motion on April 14, were calling for an end to the relationship. Um, you said the sister city's relationship was farcical, um, and that the the governing body in Kunming was an extension of Chinese communist regime. So. How does sort of, you know, trying to leverage off that relationship work now when you were calling it as farcical back in April? As I said, I stand by those comments at the time. I was overturned uh, for a, uh, through a rescission motion. I guess this is a litmus test also, isn't it? That if people want this relationship... I mean, our mayor rushed out to apologise to the Chinese people, to the CCP, to Kunming, on the back of saying, oh, it was just a few individuals that wanted to do that. I still stand my ground on that. However, we have this relationship, so OK, as long as you're putting it to the test, let's use it. I mean, there's an old saying in the bush, why own a dog and bark yourself? The point is, if we have this relationship, and this is what it's meant to be, and it was said at the time that this was a relationship for cultural influence, for uh, industrial influence, for commercial benefits and people to people. And I do, and at the time, I actually said, it's the formal relationship. Otherwise, you're just giving tacit approval by saying, oh, we don't like what you're doing over there. We don't like the fact that you know, there's two million Uyghur Muslims or the, or the Christians right. or what's happening in Taiwan. So the point is we use it to our advantage and to the advantage of China, and maybe that's the conduit. If it's not, so be it. But that, that's the reverse back to where we were. Paul, final. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks for your time today. That's fine. All right. My pleasure. Good on you. Thanks, Tom.